I feel like I am running on fumes. I'm drinking black coffee. Hello YouTube, my name's Marie, and today I'm going to do a full review of the 2018 K-drama Come Hug Me. Or so our male lead pursues a life of civil service. He becomes a police officer with the aim of helping others, and perhaps subconsciously attempting to atone for his father's sins, a father who brutally murdered the parents of our female lead. Even though the father is now behind bars facing the death penalty, danger continues to stalk our female lead, and it is up to our hero to protect his childhood love while maintaining his humanity and his morals in the process. Because at its core, Come and Hug Me explores the main question within the academic field of criminology being, are criminals born or made? Love it. <laughs> yes, this is also a romance, but in my opinion, it leans a little bit more on the thriller, suspense, cop kind of show. And this series has wonderful atmosphere. Whenever the father, I'll look up his name and I'll put it on the screen because he's worth all the recognition. And whenever he is on screen, there's a heightened sense of danger because he's so intimidating. He's acting phenomenally. He became the role. I have seen him in other things and then I just watched him in Kingdom, which was such a great surprise because I watched Come and Hug Me first. I watched this perhaps two weeks ago, so this is actually more of a reflective review rather than like a gut reaction after the fact, but I still think that there's value in this kind of how I feel about the show a couple weeks afterwards. You get me? Anyways, going back to the father and his acting, like he became the role, his mannerisms and the way he walked was so intimidating to me and if I saw him on the streets I would honestly be scared I'd be like I'm running the other way as fast as I can because vibe he gives off is danger like alarm bells <laughs> I actually think it is him and his role that is the most memorable throughout the entire series now that's not a diss to the leads they're lovable and I'll talk about them in a moment everybody is acting at such a high level I don't think it's a diss or a put down to anybody to say that the father is like up here <laughs> he's probably one of my favorite villains of all time next I want to talk about a couple of the supporting characters the first being the mother her character gives this show so much heart. And the theme that I mentioned earlier of the nature versus nurture is exemplified by her role in the story because she is the nurture end of that discussion where the father is representing the nature aspect. I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than that. I could argue that the father's harsh method of child rearing is also on the uh, nurture side of things, but for instance, the brother. Does the brother become a criminal because of his father's influence? Nothing to do with his genes or his temperament, but because of how his father raised him. That's a question for a whole nother video. <laughs> but you know, for simplicity's sake, they're two sides of the same coin, one being nature, one being nurture, and their arcs were perfectly done. She is the nurture side because she's not the biological mother of the male lead. She is also another acting powerhouse within this show. Speaking of the brother, he is another supporting character that I think deserves a highlight. His redemption arc is so good. A few episodes prior to his character's kind of climactic moment, I had an idea of how I would redeem his character and I was like, this is perfect. I'm a writing genius. <laughs> and I was so happy that my idea was actually what came to happen. Like I thought it was perfect. It just made me really happy that they did what I wanted them to do. And there's actually a couple moments, I can think of three, where I predicted something that I was like, wow, this would be a really good evolution of a character that would be, for me, incredibly satisfying. And it actually did end up happening. Certain things with symbolism, like the hammer versus the gun, they did that. And like other character moments they did. And I had wanted them to do that. So you might hear that and be like, Wow, 
so the show is predictable. And you could say that, whereas I think the show has great payoff because all of these moments are earned. Okay, so now let's talk about the leads. Overall, the female lead is fine. Serviceable. Okay, frankly, she's a bit forgettable. Like I said, I watched this a couple weeks ago, and out of all the characters involved with this show, I don't think of the female lead as something that I really loved within the series. She's fine, she's a beautiful woman, and she's acting fine, and you know, it's fine. She's fine. <laughs> now, the female lead within this show actually becomes an actress, and that part of the story I really enjoyed because you got a little bit of the behind the scenes of the whole celebrity process and how celebrities manipulate the media. It's not in there a, lo a lot. It's kind of just like sprinkled in the perfect amount that I enjoyed. Also, the child actress that plays the younger version of the female lead Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's all I can say is wow. You should look out for her in the future. I know I will. Okay, so the male lead. I found his character so refreshing because he is what I think of as a very traditional like man's man. <laughs> he's strong, he's stoic, he's a protector, he loves his family, and he's handsome as... And why I liked him so much is because the writers made him into such a like really strong man without falling into the pitfalls of toxic masculinity. So the writers do a really good job with him. I do think the director kind of drops the ball a bit with him because some of the fight sequences turn him into a bit of a superhero because he's got martial arts training. They established that very early on, but when he's having like fights with people. He instead relies on brute strength instead of, you know, learned and practiced moves. I, I'm i not a martial arts person, so combinations, moves, you know, like that whole thing. So there's this one moment where instead of like dodging and deflecting and like disarming his opponent who has a knife, he just grabs the knife and holds the knife and I'm like, mmm, mmm boring. <laughs> so along those lines, some of the fight sequences are eh, while others are really good. There's one in a garage involving our male lead and his brother, and that was very emotional almost. There was a lot of storytelling that was also happening with that fight, which is the perfect way to do action. If you can do action that also moves the plot along and the characters along, that's lovely. Let's talk about the camera work really quickly because overall it's at a really nice standard um, but there are a few moments where I can tell that the director was trying to be creative. For instance, he uses he uses reflections a lot. Also, on the production side of things, I think that the um, costume designer is doing a wonderful job because what she chooses to dress the actors in amplifies their roles in the story. For instance, the brother of the male lead wants to be like his father, like the serial killer father. He wants to get his father's approval. So there's a moment where they're standing face to face and the father has his whole like get up on and then the son is mimicking it in certain ways. Like they both have a similar hat on and they both are wearing similar colors. And I thought that was just so good. And then that also happens fairy tale like imagination sequence where one character is wishing that their family could be reunited in like one unit again. And in that sequence as well, all of the characters are wearing similar color tones. Like I believe it was all like soft pinks and uh, soft whites. So it really shows the thought that went into what they were wearing. And I, it's, it's a little thing and I appreciate it. So overall, I'm gonna give this show a 4.5 out of five stars. And it's missing that like 0.5 star to make it a perfect thing because of my own personal enjoyment. You know, for me to give you out of five star, it really needs to be something that I loved and needed to watch all the way through. And while this show was very good and it had one of the best villains ever, it just wasn't quite there.
This review is going to be up late because last night I went to a concert and I let myself sleep in because this whole last weekend has just been go, go, go for me. <laughs> I'm going to end with a little clip of the concert that I went to because they're a Canadian based band and I think they are awesome. So if you watch this clip and you're like, wow, I should check them out. You should. Mother, mother, they are great indie rock based out of Quadra and it's like the island right next to mine. Love them. Anyways, anyways, have a good day. Have a good night. Bye.